Brewers. Today in the Lazy Home Brewer, we're going to talk about Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest in Munich, Germany is one of the largest and oldest festivals in the world. But it wasn't always the beer fest that we know it for today. The very first Oktoberfest in 1810 was part of a royal wedding celebration, and it was a huge hit. So much so that they decided it would be an annual event. Ironically, just three years in, it was postponed for the first time because of the Napoleonic Wars. But with the exception of a few wars that consumed all of Europe, and a few plagues, Oktoberfest has continued through to the present day. In 2019, more than 6 million visitors passed through the gates and consumed more than 7 million liters of beer. Bavarian beer laws at the beginning of the 1800s prohibited production of beer between the end of September and the end of April. This posed a particular challenge for brewers who wanted to make sure they had plenty of great beer available for the festival. What they settled on was a Märzen beer, or March beer, if you know your German. Märzen is a dry, malty amber beer, has a slight biscuity flavor, just enough hops to balance it out. But what really distinguishes it as a style is that it sellers very well. Brewers could brew their beer in March, put it into the ice caves, pull it out in September, and have lots of really awesome beer. Over the years, many brewers have introduced a special Fest beer, which may or may not necessarily be a Märzen style. We're going to do a tasting of the currently available Fest beers and try and take away some tasting notes from that for my own extract recipe. So here are the cast of characters we have today. So. Starting our uh, tasting off the day is Hofbrau. Uh, Hofbrau is probably the, the quintessential Munich brewery. Uh, going to the Hofbrau house is one of those experiences that is sort of like going to the Statue of Liberty if you go to New York. Uh, anybody who goes to Munich pretty much goes to Hofbrau house as a leader of their beer, uh, although it may not be the Oktoberfest unless they're there at the right time of the year. Um, but that's what we're drinking today. All of these are only seasonally available. Um, I would definitely recommend when uh, September rolls around that you uh, go out and see if you can find these uh, or some version thereof in your area. <laughs> So here we are with the Hofbrau. Sort of a light straw color. Drinks almost more like a Vienna lager, really. It's very nice though. Mm. Crisp. Really entirely malty. No hops left in there at all that I can taste. Just enough to sort of balance it out but a very dry, clean, malty beer, uh, mostly Pilsner. So that brings us over to the, the Spaten, or if you uh, speak German, it would be Spaten. A much darker color. This is much closer to what we would call a traditional uh, Märzen style. Spaten is another one of the very old breweries in Munich. Uh, one of the originals going all the way back to the beginning of Oktoberfest. Um, the spot and tent is where they tap the first keg every year. So, here's to you folks. A much lighter smell on that one. Wow. Mm. Much more Munich malt forward on that one. Not the bite that you get from the Pilsner malt. I'm probably wearing this all over my mustache, I'm sure. Mm. I gotta say, my memories of being in the spot and tent are magnificent. Uh, a lot of the other tents, um, uh, 
So this moves us along to the polliner. Again, a little bit darker. Like it's uh, it's, it's buddy there. They're spotting. So let's let's uh, see how that one is here. Hmm. Very crisp malt smell. Hmm. Hmm. Little bit of a like a grassy grassy hot flavor on there. Not. Not really, not really invasive, but definitely present. Mm. Excellent. Okay, so this brings us along to the the Erdinger. Um, now I, I'm going to say right up front, I panicked on this one. Uh, I, I waited until a little too late in the season. And I want to make sure that I had enough Oktoberfest beers to, to do a tasting. Um, and I, I grabbed this one without looking close at it. And this is one of those best beers. I'm sure it's a very fine beer, but after a little closer inspection, I realized this is actually a wheat beer. Uh, it is not a Mertzen style, not, not traditional Mertzen style anyway. Um, but we're going to go ahead and, and give it a try anyway. So that's definitely, I would say, the lightest of the, the ones that we have today. Sort of the straw color. Uh, not much on the nose, really. That is a, a absolutely a very light, crisp beer. Um, it, it is very drinkable. This would be great beer on a hot day. Don't know if I'd really call this an Oktoberfest beer. Um, I'm, of course, I'll be the first to admit that I'm looking for a very particular thing with a Meritzen style, which this is not. So, um, um, uh, they fooled me, shame on me on this one. Not like it's not a good beer, but just not really what I was here for. So, you know. Hmm. These will not get poured out though. Not to worry. Moving right along. This brings us to the American Oktoberfest beers. So the first one is from Sierra Nevada, um, which is in Chico, California. They make a number of beers. And this is their take on the Oktoberfest. I can definitely smell hops on that one. Um, a little bit surprising almost. Mm. A little more like an earthy, spicy flavor. Um, they, they have made probably a later addition of hops in that. Um, I'm, I'm not even sure I would call that a, a Meritzen style. Um, I'm sure it is just from what they've got in it, but... Mm. Hoppier than I would expect from a, a, an Oktoberfest beer. Um, anyway, moving on. This brings us to our last uh, tasting today, which is the Oktoberfest from Founders in Grand Rapids, Michigan. You can see this, um, this one goes back more to the golden color, almost an amber. Nice malty smell on that. Mm. Very uh, biscuity, crackery sort of a, a flavor on that. Good blend between the the Munich and Pilsner malt. Can't really tell what sort of a hop they use there. It pretty much goes away. Mm. Got a nice flavor. Um, I, I would almost say if you if, if the if the spotting and the polliner had a baby, it might be the founder's October fest. Just saying. Pretty good though. So what did I take away from the tasting today? Well, 
I realized that I don't drink a lot of commercially produced fest beers. My memory of what an Oktoberfest beer tastes like is considerably different than what is currently commercially available. It's possible that what's exported to the U.S. is different than what's served at Oktoberfest. And it's also possible that I drink mostly local beers that are made to be a Meritzen style. That being said, there are absolutely a couple of things that I want to make sure I include in my beer. One is the yeast. White Lab's Oktoberfest yeast has a flavor that I find in all of the Munich beers. I don't know what brewery they got it from, but it is absolutely the genuine thing and makes a huge difference in getting the right flavor. Another is using traditional malts. It will be Pilsen and Munich malts and traditional German hops. I'm not going to take you through the entire brew day, but here's the recipe that I came up with. If you're still with me, now would be a good time to hit the like and subscribe button. If you didn't have a chance to copy down the recipe and you're interested, I'll make sure that I put it in the comments below. So there it is, my take on an Oktoberfest lager. After three weeks of fermentation, eight weeks of lagering, it is ready to drink. Color's great, probably one of the hardest things to do with an extract brew is to get the correct color. Nice and shiny clear, that's the lagering. Mm. Huh. It tastes like a happy memory. I had a great time at Oktoberfest, and this beer brings me back every year. The yeast is definitely the key. I've made this recipe a few different times with different yeasts, and the genuine Oktoberfest White Labs yeast is what makes the difference and makes it taste correct. Not sure which brewery they got it from, but it tastes fantastic. This is a little complicated for the lazy home brewer. As I said, you need to have temperature control to make this ferment and lager correctly, uh, but well worth it if you have the means to do so. That's about it here from the Beer Hut. Until next time, this is the Lazy Home Brewer. Brew what you like and like what you brew. Prost!